Hey, what's going on guys? Today I want to take a break from the analytical content that I usually make and discuss the new housing system coming with patch 1.5, which is being called the Serena Teapot. If I'm not mistaken, this is the first permanent content being introduced into the game, which also makes it the first new introduction of endgame content into Genshin Impact. I'm actually surprised that I haven't seen more videos going around about the housing system because it looks like MiHoYo completely knocked it out of the park. The area that we get to build on looks huge, and even at launch it looks like there will be no shortage of items for customizing this space. In this video I want to talk about the Serena Teapot, including the features coming with launch and those coming in future patches, as well as some thoughts that I have about this feature being introduced into the game. I think there's a lot to be said about the Serena Teapot and what this could mean for the future of Genshin Impact, so we'll discuss this near the end of the video. The community has been begging for legitimate endgame content for months, and MiHoYo has finally delivered. Was this the kind of endgame content that you were hoping for? Or if not, is this something you're still excited as being introduced? Let me know down in the comments. Okay, so we're going to access the Serena Teapot by placing and interacting with a gadget much like the portable Waypoint, Camera, or Sealy. There are three realm layouts available to us, which are the Floating Abode, Emerald Peak, and Cool Isle. These are the areas that we'll be able to customize and build in. Not gonna lie, when I saw this, I had flashbacks to when I chose the Yellow Sealy over the Pink one, but don't worry, over time we'll be able to build in all of these different realms. With the introduction of player housing, there are three major systems you'll need to know about when it comes to the Serena Teapot. This was kind of confusing when I was reading the patch notes in MiHoYo News, so I'll try and lay it out clearly for you here so you can jump right in when the housing system goes live. The first system, known as the Adeptal Mirror, is basically the same as the Adventurer's Handbook that we have in the open world. There will be various milestones that we will have to achieve in order to complete this handbook, which for round one will include things such as collecting a certain amount of wood, as well as using the various building systems that are available. It looks like there will be a total of 11 rounds to complete the Adeptal Mirror, and the rewards from completing the various parts of this will include blueprints for crafting new types of items and increased trust rank. Trust rank is the second system we will discuss, which is basically the same as adventure rank but for the new housing system. Trust rank will be gained through completing the Adeptal Mirror we just described and through crafting and placing furniture. Progressing through the different trust rank levels will not only give primo gems and new blueprints, but will also unlock new features such as increased build space and access to the two other realm layouts. Adeptal Energy is the last of the major systems. The amount of Adeptal Energy you have will determine the amount of realm currency you accumulate per hour. You increase your Adeptal Energy simply by placing more furnishings in your realm. This realm currency will be kind of like resin, meaning that only a certain amount can be stored at a given time. The amount that you store will increase with trust rank, while the amount you passively generate will increase with Adeptal Energy. This will be used in the shop called the Realm Depot to purchase furnishings, blueprints, realm layouts, as well as the items that are not specific to the housing system through the Realm Treasures menu. This part is extremely exciting and will cut down on our total resin usage by taking advantage of this housing system. This is because Realm Currency can be used to also purchase Hero's Wit, Mystic Enhancement Ore, Mora, and three new items being introduced which are Transient Resin, Sanctifying Essence, and Sanctifying Unction. Transient Resin will work much like Fragile Resin, but will decompose over time. Although there is not official confirmation at this time, it is very likely that this will also be equivalent to 60 Resin. The other two items, Sanctifying Essence and Unction, will be similar to Mystic Enhancement Ore, but this will be used to upgrade artifacts instead of weapons. We can see in the live stream that the Realm Treasure Shop will reset for all the items together and that a decent amount of materials can be purchased in total. This includes 1 Transient Resin, 20 Heroes Wit, 40 Mystic Enhancement Ore, 200,000 Mora, 5 Sanctifying Essence, and 20 Sanctifying Unction. Although we do not know the actual Realm Treasure's reset duration, it is pretty likely that this will be on a weekly basis, much like the other systems in the game. If this turns out to be true, this could be a pretty significant weekly resin savings, equating to about 120 resin for purchasing all of the Hero's Wit and Mora alone. At the highest Adeptal Energy level we saw during the livestream, currency will be generated at 30 an hour, which is equal to 5,040 per week. To buy out the whole Realm Treasure shop without the fabric will cost 12,000 currency, so this will not be enough to purchase all of the items, but will be a great way to passively collect some of the items without resin, and would be enough to buy all of the Hero's Wits and Mora. In the beginning, you'll probably want to spend this money on furnishings for your realm so that you can increase the rate you generate currency, 
and the amount that you can store, but as your realm becomes more complete, this currency will come in very useful for resin savings. On top of this, MiHoYo did confirm that starting in patch 1.5, the first three weekly bosses completed will only cost 30 resin. So overall, MiHoYo is becoming more lax on resin, and we should see increased resources moving into the future of Genshin. Let's briefly touch on furnishings and the crafting system being implemented. Furnishings will be crafted with the items found in the open world, including new ones being introduced, as well as some of the items that can be purchased in the Realm Depot. This will include things like ores, as well as wood collected by chopping down trees, and should provide us with some more things to grind for when we're out of resin. We did see that iron and white iron chunks are crafting materials, but it looks like the majority of the items will not necessarily have duplicate uses and therefore won't interfere with the systems currently in place that are needed to upgrade weapons, talents, or ascend characters. I'm personally okay with this as long as I don't have to stretch my resources too thin. MiHoYo announced that over 200 types of furnishings will be launching in 1.5, and I'm sure we can also expect limited ones to be available in events and more to be added in the future. MiHoYo also confirmed two new features will be added in future patches. The first will be a gardening feature for growing vegetables and flowers, which is great for some of us lazy players who hate running around the map collecting these items for recipes. The second feature will be the ability to station your characters in your realm, which will be a really cool aesthetic and should make for some great screenshots. In the official dev Q&A, MiHoYo stated that the Serena Teapot system you'll experience in version 1.5 is just the beginning. Many functions and contents are not yet available. So this is going to be a large part of the Genshin experience, and MiHoYo is clearly putting a lot of resources into this new function. This should provide those who are interested with some additional things to do on a daily basis. I play this game to relax, and I think that this feature will add a lot of value to my experience with Genshin. I really like that MiHoYo made this feature available in co-op so that we can go check out friends housing and flex our own and look forward to some friendly competition on the Discord. Okay, so with all of that said, I know that this is not the end game content that at least a portion of the community was hoping for, so I want to give my thoughts on this. If you watch my channel or other channels like mine, you're definitely in the category of Genshin players that really try to optimize their gameplay with character builds, team comps, abyss strategies, or just general account efficiencies. I do believe that we are the kinds of players that want more difficult content, or just difficult content that remains in the game outside of the abyss. With that said, I put out a poll a few days ago and 25% of you said that their most anticipated thing coming in patch 1.5 is the housing system, so I do believe that there is interest from my viewers. We know that MiHoYo can implement more challenging content as they have already had the hypostatic symphony event that was present in patch 1.2. This was some of, if not the most difficult content introduced into the game that allowed us to manually adjust difficulty by adding certain challenges such as reduced time, increased boss HP, or increased enemy resistance. I do believe that based on this and all of the combat systems that already exist in the game, that more challenging content would be the easiest thing that MiHoYo could implement, yet they have yet to do so. The challenges we have seen since the Hypostatic Symphony all have been significantly easier. I was able to solo all of the content in the latest Contending Tides event with pretty little difficulty, although I did struggle in the Hypostatic Symphony. We know that MiHoYo sends out monthly surveys to the player base on top of all the statistics that they can access in-game. My guess is that the majority of the community struggles with these events, struggles with Abyss, and expresses this in the monthly surveys or through their account stats. I personally think that this may be some foreshadowing as to what MiHoYo is planning for the endgame of Genshin, at least in the near future. This is a pretty clear statement that MiHoYo envisions Genshin as a casual game and are trying to be accepting to most all players. Do I think that more difficult permanent content will never be added? No, I do believe that it will, but it is clearly not a priority at this time, and I think that we'll be waiting some time for this to happen. Without this, I'll be taking this game more casually, experimenting with less powerful characters and team comps, and doing personal challenges such as soloing content. I see both sides of the coin and do hope MiHoYo can develop a happy medium for the player base, especially those who have spent six months not only grinding gear, but also spending money on characters they can't fully utilize. That's all I got for you guys today. I hope you guys found this video helpful and informative. If you did, please consider subscribing down below. I put out Genshin Impact videos just like this one every single week. I'll see you guys for the next one. Peace.